Welcome everybody, welcome. Happy Friday. Let's get ready. Enter, take a seat in the virtual lounge. Welcome LinkedIn, welcome Twitter, welcome Rumble and YouTube. Agile Lounge for Business Agility with yours truly. We're going to start this episode 71 very soon. Feeling the summer is coming. The playlist is summer of 22, mixed by yours truly. This is Wake Up featuring Jesse Lee Tedford from a great UK trance music group called Four Strings. Oh wow, 554 on YouTube, 554, so which means it's 10 more than last week and almost 555. Rumble on you only 10. Make an effort. I want to move to Rumble by 2023. All right. We are everywhere now, I think. Let's lower the music of this uh, summer of 22. Playlist mixed by yours truly. Welcome. Yes, this is a great song from the 90s. We play music because it's Friday. It's Friday noon Eastern time, 11 Central, 6 p.m. in Europe. Welcoming my Central European from Poland, Hungary. Thanks for your comment. Thanks for everything, actually. And this is Gala from Italia. In Spanish, I think this one. It's uh... all right, all right, all right. So I'm very, very, very happy to be before you today for the 71 episode of the Friday Live Agile, and maybe a special audio podcast of the Dare Real Agile, where I will combine episode 70 and 71 into one for maybe the end of this month because it's already amazingly the end of June up and as we have their Agile podcast every last Friday of the month I might do something special because you know I'm doing it voluntarily with passion uh, but again my first priority or my client that I serve with pleasure I even so much love my client and when I say client in my case I'm talking about organization of any size public sector private sector Sometimes it's teams within organization they need like specific. So I'm doing like enterprise level coaching, now executive coaching. I'm just out of a great week with Daniel Mizik and Peter Fishback, learning how to act as an executive coach. Very amazing experience. I couldn't care less about the certification that we have at the end of that intensive week of training and coaching. But I, because again, it's not the outcome and paper like the one you see behind me here like no it's the meeting of those people in the room and the class learning new stuff that you might even haven't seen before and improving yourself in the way that 
you serve, help, counsel your client. And so that's why I'm great. I'm really grateful to be surrendered by this international network of great mind, of open mind, uh, teaching you things that uh, will improve the world of work, the future of work. We expect that. That's the outcome. That's the end game. But it will never be finished. Because everything is in movement in space. Time and space are in total subsension. And I remind you again, it's going to be the topic of our 71 episode today. To awaken Agilize with me. Agile for fun. AF stands for Agility with fun. But it's my name, Alexandre Frédéric, as you know. I'm Alexandre Frédéric Jolie, your coach AF. Very pleased to be before you again on this amazing Friday, June the 17th. Are you feeling the summer? I'm putting you in the background because at the Agile Lounge, we like to teach and coach with music, lounge music, jazz music. And as we uh, explained in New York back in 2019, I think, uh, that's one of the reasons we put the lounge in our brand, uh, because we believe in this mathematical music experience, the empirical process of jazz over the harmonic of classic, but everything is in harmony. Anyways, that could be a subject of another podcast by itself, isn't it? And um, to complete the kind of the intro, and to let you know what you could expect for the next 40 some minutes. Uh, right now, I'm not paying attention to any 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 um, SMS or or chat. So, for the audience, I see you are across the board about 20 people watching right now. So, welcome, welcome to the virtual Agile Lounge, the Friday live show. Every Friday, we're here. It's the 71th week in a in a row, and I'm so pleased to do it for sparking you and helping you see something else. And today we're going to see something else. Uh, I won't say very advanced, but it's something very innovative. And um, I would like also to let you know that I was very, very happy of uh, yesterday, despite the kind of the weather we had in Montreal that people cancel. I understand that. Maybe not everyone would like to drive with aqua planning or kids uh, going to pick up kids and stuff. So when, when it's, a, it's a better weather, like, of course, people show up. But... But those people who showed up, I think they really appreciate the um, simulation facilitation we did of a team working agreement for better engagement. Uh, so that was one of the rare scrum beer with a team. And I would like to thank special thanks for the crew collective team because the crew crew, <laughs> crew, 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 crew. So Joanna, thank you so much, Christina. Uh, Michelle, the new uh, hostess and everything. And we're going to share some tips because all the tips that was provided through even bright or even in person, I'm going to share it uh, with my team of the Scrum Beer, Anna and Elizabeth. Thank you so much. And of course, the crew that helped me make it happen. And uh, it was great wine, uh, great atmosphere. Um, and even like, the, the, because I think it's the F1 in Montreal. So uh, old Montreal and downtown was kind of in craziness despite the thunderstorm. So very great moment, very great 17 um, scrum beer. So it's encouraged me to uh, continue it. And uh, we're going to do hopefully another in-person event somewhere in fall. We are going to be back for the 18th edition of the scrum beer. Um, maybe towards the end of um, towards the end of September. So if you are watching this on Rumble or YouTube, Go in the description. You have the link to subscribe to the mailing list to know in advance uh, when and where it's going to be. And uh, and also to be part of an agile circle of coaches. I said circle of coaches, but you could be a scrum master. You could be even though uh, if you're in project management and you'd like to transition to uh, the product management type of things, you're more than welcome. Uh, because it's co-active coaching that I create a space. It's free. Uh, we'll still be remotely because uh, having insightful of people from all around the world, I think it's great. I might try to do an hybrid event somewhere in September for the kind of the back to school. Uh, we'll see how that works. Testing also this uh, Wello app uh, to for the people who will be virtual. So because I'd like to open it up now. Um, to the people uh, from um, 
all around the world. I think it's very um, it's very powerful uh, to exchange and do coactive coaching like this. So anyway, if you'd like to be in the known and be aware of these uh, free activities that we do at the Agile Launch for the community of business agility, please subscribe to my mailing list. Again, if you're watching on YouTube and Rumble, the link will be in the description. And if you go on my LinkedIn, you probably uh, could follow my website and subscribe. It's uh, actually the website is right there. It's uh, agile-lounge.com for more information. And speaking of, we are revamping our website uh, to reflect where we are after five years of operation under that brand. But I remind you that I've been practicing Lean Scrum and uh, promoting agility and business agility since 1999. Yes, I'm getting old, but I always uh, like to be a part of the pioneer of things. Same thing with, oops, sorry. Same thing with this. And don't get me started about, oh, we lost 52% of Bitcoins. Yeah, well, if you're not orange pill yet, sorry for you, but it's time. It's time to get some now because it is going to skyrocket again and again. Uh, and if you see it as an investment, I'm sorry for you. It's not an investment. It's an alternative exchange uh, powerful tool. And the blockchain is not just for uh, decentralized finance. It could be for decentralized identity, digital identity or digital twin. And I would love to have to my microphone here, maybe doing a crypto agile edition of this uh, Dare Real Agile podcast and Friday Live Agile um, with Will Samson. I don't know if you still around, if you still do your kind of a kind of street workshop explaining the digital twin and the importance of security and privacy with our digital identity, because uh, whether you like it or not, you could still opt out and I advocating it, but still. So why are we today on the 71 episode talking once again of the great innovation, the great system and framework created by Mike Beadle one of the co senatory of the Agile Manifesto, for those who don't know, uh, who uh, passed away, unfortunately, in March of 2018. <clears throat> and I had the pleasure to have him as a coach, as a mentor, as a friend. And um, he taught me mostly uh, everything. He kickstart me back in 2010 with business agility. Um, so, so once again, uh, I salute you. This is for Mike, because last week uh, you've seen um, an introduction to what is Enterprise Scrum, and um, it was going very well, very well. And uh, we had also this. Um, I, I showed you video uh, that was captured by myself and uh, Marina Alex, kind of a mix of both, explaining what is business agility. We present you the definition of business agility. So for those who didn't saw that first episode last Friday, episode 70, um, and if you are not listening to it by doing your jogging or your spinning or your workout on the Dairy Agile podcast in your pocket, uh, will be a condensing of episode one and two, part one and part two here. Um, I invite you and uh, probably after this live, it's going to be uh, something that you could click on your screen uh, to go watch the uh, intro because I won't go through it again. But we do it because we had a technical problem with Minimum App. And as I'm revamping my website this summer, this summer is going to be a summer of change for the Agile Lounge brand towards the um, the real what I would like to project into the world the next level agility and uh, concentrating maybe more on the dare real agile and the Friday live agile and doing less but smarter and better and we are going to also change um, not only our CMS but also our streamer and and everything so we're gonna improve this is the goal uh, very rapidly uh, to provide you a better experience, even if we do it for free and voluntarily. And again, I would like to thank uh, Joe, Marie, and more for your Bitcoins and your PayPal donation. If you want to do so, follow the link and the description of the YouTube and Rumble video. You're more than welcome. It shows your support. And I'd love to share everything I receive with Anna Gorski. Thank you so much, Anna, to have my back again. Elizabeth Marinai, and uh, sometimes uh, 
if uh, we really did good numbers and for me good numbers if like monthly we reach uh, 500 dollars so i give 250 to to my team and i uh, keep 250 for an organism and um uh, and we look at um i mostly give to i don't know in english what's the name but it's like a bono here in montreal for those from montreal who knows that i like to uh, provide them and also the um, where my mom used to work on the Plateau Mont Royal, undisclosed location because it's for women, women in trouble. Uh, and my mom was working there, so I give them it's uh, La Petite Maison uh, de la Miséricorde. Of course, I cannot say where it is, and I don't even know uh, the place that I go. Uh, it's probably not the, the safe the safe space for women that were in trouble because of some uh, bad men, mad men. And uh, so we should put agility also into this... Uh, fake safe uh, sex war and bringing uh, this equilibrium of clarity and clarity of authorization if you see what i mean reading between the lines so today i'd like to like the part of defining what is enterprise scrum because last week we saw the proposed definition of the group of enterprise scrum for what is business agility and as they call we call ourselves enterprise scrum for business agility um i was giving like 15 minutes and nobody not like right now you have about 23 i see on the counter 23 so please chat with me if you see that the sound is off or the screen is off or whatever please alert me because it was someone who alert me on my phone that i was off last week so this is why i'd like to redo it and i won't share my screen because this melon app literally sucks i'm sorry veronica i know you try your best i know you're in kind of a beta extension but truly as i'm presenting my brand company and i'm having a bigger and bigger funnel bigger bigger exposure i cannot take that risk anymore of having flawlessness and a technical issue uh, and me ranting about it live instead of speaking of my subject so that's why we are going to move in the meantime that we revamp our website to something more efficient and we'll see if her streams will deliver so anyone out there who do vlog casting and and, and and stuff please tell me in the comment below if i'm right or wrong about this and remember to uh, rumble glove it youtube smash the like button and again for those who are watching right now anywhere i'm gonna take the last 10 15 minutes to open up for questions and uh, we could open a zoom audio line your face won't be uh, in it so enterprise scrum uh, okay so let's um don't want to write into academic definition so what i want to do is basically um define it as its own invitation first like what should be agility by the way if you'd like to transit from project to product management from uh, a better uh, sense of an experience for both your client and your employees uh, you should invite it okay it's an invitation especially in this uh, dilemma of top down bottom up it could be solved by this because i think the leadership of any organization of any size should make an invitation for change and also those who work on the front line should also be able to ask the leadership and invite them for that change so invitation is very the key here and what i like with the, the people i was in my executive coaching this week uh to name daniel music with the open leadership network what he did uh, is he's create the invitation based change at the oln so this is exactly it so you see we are the children of mike beetle mindset and then after you invite people uh you you create a space so it could be an open space with mr owen and music it could be also um the iteration and subsension within scrum that built enterprise scrum with mike beetle and then so you invite and then you iterate or you open the space to create something iterate and create and then you make it evolve and as you know 2022 for me the year of the tiger it's all about proposing evolution over transformation there is no agile transformation what you are transforming 
it's your worker experience within your enterprise. What you are transforming, it's your business. But moreover, it's the evolution of this behavior, of this practice, of this process, and especially, and the art of the enterprise scrum is also that for business agility is the interaction between the people because their interaction will be creating by inviting iterating and evolving this exact process that they need so it's not the other way around it's not structure over people it should be people over structure people first all right so so enterprise prom for business agility. If you come to a course that we're going to start doing in French and English in person for Montreal, Toronto, and soon to be New York, uh, and uh, also still continue virtually uh, using Zoom and Miro technique, um, to show you this uh, purpose of enterprise Chrome. And this, I will um, ask permission to Michael Orman to uh, utilize his guide. Uh, and we're going to make this kind of workshop, practical workshop, to show you the benefit of using Enterprise Scrum and maybe a little bit of open space agility as well. So because we really talk about an agile organization, okay? Transform and evolve. It's, uh, it's all around the customer experience having in mind this customer segment that will inform the persona where you could start your value stream, where you could start the uh, scale collaboration of portfolios, okay? So it's a lot more powerful than what you have out there. And we will try to show it there. And if we need a part three to go deeper, we'll do a part three to go deeper. So, you know, since, uh, as I said, I've been introduced by Mike, uh, on business agility in uh, the turn of the first decade of this century, which is 2009, 2010, when I was coming back from uh, my gig in San Francisco. So, um, and 20 many years ago, the agile methods uh, and the agile movement, like, you know, agile manifesto, it's the kid of the scrum way, the scrum way and the extreme programming technique are the mother and father of agile and the agile movement the big deal and the big idea be beyond the buzzwording uh, was uh, <clears throat> sorry all of the study between 2000 2010 that a hey, the real revolution should be something that it's it's scalable into the entire organization we call it the agile organization back then and then people start calling yes it's business agility because it's the entire business and um and to face that vuca you know um so business agility in today's world <clears throat> it's how we could utilize everything the manufacturing with lean did for a couple of decades how they transferred that into software development and then it and and then the maturity is now let's use agile techniques and lean thinking into the entire enterprise so that's why we call it enterprise scrum and and scrum is a fundamental because the scrum system <clears throat> sorry about that my allergy is working so the scrum system by itself could help you configure different type of framework that you might need in a complex environment because agile is very well fit for any complex environment about your technology about the people interaction, about the customer needs ever changing, and about what's the world giving you as socioeconomic uh, type of thing. So this is why we need to be agile. This mindset of more than adaptation, I will say it's the mindset of being flexible. You know, agile is an adjective that we use in sports. So it's to be sporty, to be, uh, you know, be able to maneuver into all of these things. And um, what business agility is not, it's uh, giving the level of confusion in the marketplace with people buzzwording again about all of these systems. So let's also notice a few things that are not business agility. It's not just software thing or engineering. Business agility is not, is not no planning or 
quite of the contrary. Business agility is not drifting rootlessness, jumping from one approach to another. When we talk about tailoring it or configuring it to your culture and aspect and stuff, it doesn't mean um, that you just jump an experimental empirical process. We have a word too in science. It's empirical control process. But control, not in a negative light. You should project it as you control the quality of your process. You you make this process evolve empirically. So empirical control process in science that we apply, we bring into business agility, teaching and coaching. It's very the one of the fundamental of enterprise scrum. And no matter why, because Mike was also a PhD in physics, and no matter why it's resonated with people like me, I am a dropout of astrophysics. I didn't complete my PhD, I stopped at the master. But nevertheless, when you have a scientific mind and a good approach of doing thing sporty way in terms of like coaching and acting, you will be resonating more with these things. And, and, and again, business agility is not an excuse for weak leaders to avoid decision or strong leaders to wring more effort, value or speed from their people. Hmm, where did I heard that before? Huh? The misunderstanding of Jeff Shuttern and book, Twice the Work. What is it again? Scrum, it's, uh, yeah, twice the work and half the time. About productivity and velocity. No, stop it. Stop it out there. Executive, look at me. Look at me. Stop it. It's none of your business. If you want to be a leader, empower your people, engage them, invite them, iterate, and discover. So that's uh, that's the point. And most importantly, business agility is not an option. Unless the complexity, uncertainty, ambiguity, disruption of the widespread and accelerating change in our world somehow passes, you buy. You will soon be choosing between agilizing your work or retiring from it. The future of work is being agile, gentlemen and ladies. Agile and the need for business agility are not going away. They just started. So for all those who claim that agile is a thing of the past because it's been 18 years or 22 years now, well, we are into an evolution, not a revolution. It's an evolution with business agility and conscious leadership on top of it. And all these economic systems that are changing with the blockchain revolution as well. The decentralized need of being, you know, the real democratization needs decentralization, need local action. You could have a very, very high, big, holistic viewpoint of things, but you have to commit to something more local in your action. So I think Enterprise Scrum bring that pattern of decentralization that it was very dear uh, to the founder of this uh, systems. And um, so if, if we define Inspire, because this movement of Mike that created for Enterprise Scrum for GT was also, it was dear to them, to him, sorry, and to them too, like the, the group, that the author Steve Denning, which is also a great consultant, contributor at Forbes magazine, has defined the organization of the 21st century, we are in the 23rd year of this 21st century, as teams and network focus on customers, and on experience over any product or services. The experience that I have with the product. Huh? Like you saw me renting for the last year, experimenting with Melon app. I had a bad user experience. So it was about my experience. So I couldn't care that the font and the color are nice and the way I could put the logo are nice and the way I could schedule, it's easier than any other read stream. The bottom line is my experience is bad when I go live. My experience was I had to redo five podcasts because we missed something with the song, you know? So it's all about the experience. We'd like to experience something. And, and, and Mike LinkedIn, all of these canvases 
of our chart of the 21st century. We don't need our chart. It's not hierarchy. It's subsension. Subsension is the dynamic of interrelation, once again. And if you don't understand that dynamic of interrelation, you don't understand Scrum. And so you're a bad Scrum master. You're a bad product owner. And you are still kept into this kind of organization chart of escalation and stuff. No, it has to be dynamic. And that's why he, he might call it and link it the canvases RDR chart of the 21st centuries. We could debate on it. That's another way of presenting it as we evolve. So to show the dynamic network of teams, I mean, not to show, sorry, they show these canvases. They will show the dynamic of network of teams. Each will, each with its own canvases. And every one of them aim to a specific customer. When we map the organization, and this way, the emergent view is of the organization as a portfolio of teams. The emergent structure is organized around customer rather than function or feature base. And the emergent capability is the ability to respond quickly and effectively to any kind of change and disruption. See? So here you have it. It's the kind of a prelude definition of what is enterprise scrum. You like to talk about that guy because that guy is making noise and we love people who make noise. So when Elon Musk showed me his own car for the first time, he had as much to say about the key fob that opened the doors as he did about his overreaching vision for our Tesla fits and to the broader future of transportation and how important that is to our planet. That was captured by Bridgewater Associate founder, Ray Dalo on Self-Made Billionaire. An enterprise crown for business agility and this ever-changing reaction proaction to VUCA Invite everyone and visualizing everything and have a clear vision to replace the volatility. Have an understanding of what we do together by invitation. Be creative and communicate well and clear instead of complexity. And being agile, full on live through agility instead of ambiguity. Teams need to be able to see and synthesize the big picture I, I was talking before. The granular details and many perspectives in between. Usually they go and get to see only one or a few levels and facet of their works as they're segmented. The enterprise canvases remove these limits by bringing people together around bigger detail and shared picture of the work to be done with a comprehensive definition of done, agreed once again. And we, we literally learn, all of us with Mike, that Mike Beadle adapted Alex Osterwalder's business model canvas into more than a dozen different templates, each one specialized for a different area of a typical organization. So maybe I will take a chance to, uh, no, maybe not here, yeah. So sorry, I, really, I my projection right now is I'm doing it for the podcast. So sorry for those visual people on the live stream right now. I don't wanna make that mistake again. So, so in every canvas of Enterprise Scrum, we invite and support parametrization of your team's configuration. In other words, it offers menu and option and invite active consideration of what might otherwise be invisible or assume to be unchangeable. So Enterprise Scrum doesn't require or exclude any purpose of scope of work 
any management styles, any delivery or contract type, cycle land or matrix. No, it's all at once and prescribe role, but they can be filled by individual or group on a fixed or virtual as needed or on the main way. So it's about organization, organized around system product function, customer segment. It's management, management style. It's about, you could have a centralized, a delegation style, collaborative style, or adaptive style. And why not a substantive style? The Scrum style, yes, because within Enterprise Scrum, of course, there's Scrum. Scrum style could be experimental, strict by the book or purist, or advanced adapted. It's up to you to design. Delivery deployment. Individual cycle, coincident cycles, continuous delivery, or continuous deployment. Contract type, time and material, fixed price, fixed date, fixed cost. Package, cycles. It's not about delivery and deployment now. It's cycles of work, of production. Any length recursive to a cycle, and a win cycles when you want to stop to adapt. Rows, fixed, floating, or shared. But it's gonna be clear. It's your role and you own it. Matrix, cost revenue, UX, CX, and EX. EX stands for employee experience. Impact in the world. So, some of these configuration menus and options will be more readily applied in canvassing and managing the interaction within software operation and within business designing. So the visual, everything matter, that's why you put it visual and um, that it. And if you'd like to maybe see like what is all the element that enterprise Scrum for business agility that Mike used to call the all at once management because everything that matters in the canvas and because teams optimize performance across customer experience and employee engagement that provide business value and water social impact as a matrix, as matrix, okay? so. A minimum viable form of agile management can be established immediately at any level of the organization with any team or group of team or directly on top of existing cadences. Any team can visualize all of their pending work in a canvas, okay? So to understand the purpose of Enterprise Scrum, you have, of course, to understand what is Scrum. And why does it work? Scrum is more have to be seen as a paradigm shift for knowledge intensive work and in complex environment. So once you understand that and you understand the substantion, which is again the interrelation of all individual that partake of it, now you could go into the what enterprise Scrum tend to label the transformation team with coaches and consultants, the executive education that no one else beside Enterprise Scrum and now the Open Leadership Network is talking about is exactly what I did this week. As a great enterprise agile coach, I needed something that nor Agile Alliance, nor the ICF, nor the IC Agile, and not even Scrum Alliance my church is providing is executive education. How could I be a proficient consultant and enterprise agile coach dealing with executive if I not have any tools, trick, technique and methods to interact with them, to educate them, to consult them, to coach them, to get permission from them. Enterprise Scrum is probably the one and only system and framework, general framework for scaling agility 
that include that. So you build your transformation team with a proposed value list of transformation item, and you educate your executive, you counsel them well. Because again, it's not top down, bottom up, two option. It's multiple option circulating together dynamically. So that's why you have to have a massive introduction of Agile and or Scrum and or Lean to enterprise training and education. Then you start growing these mindset and adoption of Agile, Scrum or Lean within the enterprise and beyond. And for those who are an organization with technology maneuver and software development operation, you pay more attention in the scaling aspect of it for things that fit the purpose of these teams and how they are interacting with the business and working together, again, to serve the customer segment, the customer experience. You will also build within Enterprise Scrum. You will have the capability of visualizing and start iterate on the agile architecture. Who talks about agile architecture? No one. Like no one talk about executive consulting and education. If you're still in transition from project to product, Enterprise Scrum is providing you technique of PMO improvement of Enterprise Scrum. And you will have strategic Scrum with pattern for Enterprise Scrum that will slowly but surely bring you to a more capability of product management to serve your customer. So that will be the end goal. And then, of course, I could share links for many case studies in the last 20 years for Enterprise Scrum on software development, marketing, strategy, sell, human capital, product development, and technology, product development without technology. Okay? It's uh, literally with Enterprise Scrum for business agility from right now as we speak in 2022. It's an invitation to a new world of knowledge and a knowledge work. It's a true adaptative method for a project success, but we call project here something that embrace a journey that you'd like to bring it out there, you know? It's really building on the understanding that Mike's add of this perception of the world through a lens of a physicist. Yeah, proven that enterprise level scrum process for introducing, growing and managing operation, including scrum roles and the project management office and in support of executive activities, bottom up, thumb down. He conclude with detailed case studies for multiple domain where Enterprise Scrum has delivered superior results. So on the part one of this series of what is Enterprise Scrum, Beadle Legacy, I showed the video of him, explain it to Marina and myself, this um, importance. And you see it at the meetup in Chicago and, and it's really available on my YouTube channel, by the way. Um, could dig it into the Enterprise Scrum playlist and you could see Mike by himself talking about this case study at CVS Carmark. Salesforce, um, I don't know if you touched Leafion at ADP, or maybe it's more Sue that could talk about it. But anyways, so this is like, you know, for me, the key takeaway is uh, what I've learned with Mike in Enterprise Scrum, and I try to implement it at a couple of places that I won't name for now, but it's all about these um, transformation team to put the growing aspect of it, okay? And the all at once management proposing this top-down support and bottom-up initiative that will work great. If you don't, if you don't have this kind of a view or vision, especially for larger and like bigger organization, your transformation will fail because if you see it as a project, 
instead of a journey. And if you don't have a dedicated transformation team of, of architect, enterprise and business architect, real OCM people, organization change management people who have at heart the employee experience or any stakeholder experience. Because what I've loved also with, with Enterprise Scrum is when you build your canvases and you build your team, you literally, yes, your customer, you have customer segment and persona, very dedicated, like clear cut and how do we promote and grow that customer experience huh, with the manifesto for people first. But you also have internally and all those around your business of any size to take in consideration this experience that they're looking for. All right. So that was part two. It was not exactly the way I did present it last week before my friend texted me that I was off screen and off sound. I was more going into <clears throat> the Medium article that I will put the link in a pine comment of YouTube um, on this, um, <clears throat> sorry, this uh, way of defining um, Enterprise Scrum. So I could do, I could finish with that um, to show you if <laughs> this, uh, I could show you an excerpt of the chapter three of Business Agility from the book Enterprise Scrum Business Agility of the 21st Century, published by Mike Beadle in 2018, um, with the definition of what is Enterprise Scrum by himself is a generic framework to implement agile management for just about anything provides a way to implement business agility. And again, it's a way, not the only way. That's what I love from Mike. We share the same motivation and excitement of openness. Let's quickly introduce Enterprise Scrum to you. It's create three roles. The business owner, the one who create that business, the one who create that product, that solution. He's the owner of it. He's the one who put his life, his money into it. He provide the vision and support to the people who will help him make his business grow. You scale the business again. You don't scale your agile team. And, and of course, you need a coach with those systems that provide coaching to the best enterprise scrum possible for your organization. And then of course you have the team who does the work. Doesn't mean that the coach and the business owner don't work, but it's the team of the specialists you need, the uh, quality skills you need that will make that difference. And you follow a very clear, simple process about vision, what you want, your company to be, or what is your company doing? Is it a product? Is it a solution? Are there professional services? Are there, what is this? And how do you, and take that vision and learn you could unleash this initial value list. We're not talking about backlog anymore. We talk about value list, proposed value list of item, the VLI, value list item. What you want to do one customer segment at a time. So maybe if you create a product or an app or something, you want to start with consumer. And then when consumer are happy with that and with all the feedback loop that you receive, you said, let's do this customer segment of commercial and business and education and so on and so on at a time. Empirically evolving. And of course, the third process of Enterprise Scrum is cycles. Get organization to have business agility according to your need and in accordance with the vision and what you have in your value list that is most important for that one customer segment at a time. And each cycle that is organized to have this business agility uh, of responding rapidly to the customer change customer feedback experience. So each cycle will have, a, of course, a planning, what we want to accomplish in that cycle of time. You will have all the collaboration, the subsension, 
not hierarchy, self-organized collaboration, get things done with your definition of done. And all will be acceptable until you uncover new information. You need to collaborate, interacting, substantial, no hierarchy, visual canvases of everything. Then you review it. You review what get done, what got done, sorry, and where we are in all important things and what needs to be refined for the next upcoming cycle. And of course, you'd like to improve, find all the ways to improve and all important things, always the top 10, top five things of your initial value list, of your value list. And then this, what we call the PCRI, planning, collaboration, review, and improve, will goes on and on with the cycle within an enterprise scrum board as an artifact. Okay, so that's basically it. Oh, and one thing that I'd like to emphasize is the C-level suite. It is possible and probably because a management consultant whispered that idea into their ears, but it is safe to say that while most C-level executives have heard the term business agility, very likely they don't truly understand what it really means. So that's why with Enterprise Scrum for business agility, would like to bring the executive C-level suite to be educated into that. So they will be able to support operation management. It's simple as that, but it is because we have been doing it. So, you know, this is why Enterprise Scrum is, we do board level, C-level suite and operation of two, to four hour presentation, seeking common understanding. Again, the VUCA Pro, you replace the uncertainty by understanding. Do you create a sense of urgency or alignment or both, depending on what's the goal, uh, what's the gain, what's in it for them? And one of the tools we use and is a business agility map the BAM, which basically has the company map it into who is giving support to who and how. And you have the BAT, Business Agility Transformation to make things growing and evolve. Okay. So anyways, that was the part two of Mike Beadle Legacy on Enterprise Scrum for Business Agility. I hope you liked it. Um, I'm going to go around um, all the social network now, if there's among the 33 people who are listening now, if it's there, um, people in the chat. So nobody's on. So please, it's time for you to show up if you'd like to... What about LinkedIn? Because LinkedIn is completely invisible into the studio. So sorry again for the feedback at first. So please. Mm. Okay. So maybe one day uh, we'll open that Zoom audio for you to call in and be directly interacting with myself and maybe sometimes my guests. So that will be interesting. Ah, that's maybe the... All right then, so on that beautiful and amazing people, I'd like to remind you that you are beautiful, you are powerful, and you are free to be whoever you want it to be and to do whatever you want it to do in mutual respect of one another. On that, I wish you a beautiful weekend. Next week, for those in Quebec, I know it's a day off, so... I don't know. 
if the 72 episode will exist or not. But I wish you an amazing weekend and see you next time. According to your email and comment, we'll see if we do a part three to go deeper in some things. Or if I go into my valuable list of suggestions from you and uh, we'll see. So stay tuned. Usually we announce the live streaming on Tuesday, especially on LinkedIn. And for those who follow me on YouTube, thank you so much. So see you soon and have a great weekend. Coach F is signing off.